This is our 2019 Ford F-250. And I like everything about it, except for the wheels and the tires and the stance and the bed. But I have a solution. So, how do we doll up plain Jane sitting behind me here? Well, we're going to take the normal approach here. Wheels, tires, and to make the tires clear, we're going to level it out a little bit with a suspension setup and some Fox shocks. We reached out to TSW. These guys have a series of wheels called Black Rhino, and we've got the newest one. And I'm kind of liking this because it's military influenced. And if you know anything about this company, Banks, we're heavily in, into the military engine business. So John Narciso at, at TSW came up with a wheel that kind of looks like what you'd see on an up-armored Humvee. All right. These Frag 5s, it's like closing the door on a safe. Well, the up-armored Humvees, We've got a lot of experience with those because once they got up armored, they were severely underpowered. And if you took them to altitude in places like Afghanistan, oh, they hardly moved. We did a lot of Humvee upgrading, total turbo system. Here at Banks, we even built out a series of them. New intercooled Banks turbo system that altitude compensated. We changed them completely. But this was in the same time frame that we were doing our JLTV engine program, working with a whole lot of military vehicle contractors, trying to land that once in a lifetime contract, which we finally did. So every JLTV that will be produced virtually within my lifetime will have a Banks branded engine in it. So if you happen to be in Florida, stop by the Navy SEAL Museum, you'll find a Banks Experimental Humvee in there. And with wheels that probably look kind of like this. I'm dying to see this. So how about we open the box? Let's see what we've got here. These guys are serious about packaging. I'll give them that. Ooh, looks like the knife is coming into play real quick here. I cannot wait to see this. Now they make these wheels in matte black with matte with black hardware and hub cover. And they also make these wheels in a gloss white with the matte black hardware. The hub cover is kind of an interesting thing because you can run with or without the hub cover. If you want to run without and you have manual locking hubs, perfect. Uh, if you want to dress it up, run with. So if you guys will excuse me, I'm going to stand this box up. I'm still here. This box is a press fit. There we go. There we go. Oh, baby. Let me start with the back side. Look at the brake clearance they've designed into this thing. It will fit brakes on most anything you can imagine. I like going to bigger brakes if possible when you go to bigger diameter tires. Why is that? Well, there's a ratio of the brake rotor diameter to the tire diameter. When you go to a bigger diameter tire, the mechanical advantage of the brake rotor diminishes. In other words, bigger tires means less brake performance. So, so when does that give you jeopardy? Probably only when you get the stock brakes hot enough. The look of this wheel, black rhino, black rhino, the bolts, I love the brake vents. Most of the military, the true military wheels, don't have brake vents in them. So this is set up to do everything a wheel should do. I gotta tell you, John, you did, you did a hell of a job on this design. I freaking love it. Let me give her a little spin here, a little pirouette. Kind of artsy, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> 
This company was started back in 67 by a Formula One racer in Johannesburg, South Africa. TSW today is all over the world, but this line, this is all them. And here's the icing on the cake for all you animal lovers out there. A portion of the sales of all these wheels goes to StopRhinoPoaching.com. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow, the detail on this cap is beautiful. And it uses four bolts to attach it, but it has, in finish, an eight-bolt attaching appearance, which is also kind of cool. Love the Rhino on it. All right, so we've got the wheels. Now we need some badass looking tires to put on these things. Well, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. Well, I have an idea, much better. All right, let's get to tires. We've got a new tire from Toyo. This is the new AT3. It's an upgrade on the AT2, just came out this summer. What we're putting on the Ford is a 35 by 1250 R20 LT. This is a 10 ply tire, load range E. This is a stout piece. Even with this really aggressive tread, this thing is speed rated to 106 miles an hour, which is okay because current trucks are speed limited by the ECM to either 95 or 99 miles an hour anyway. This tire compared to the AT2 puts more rubber on the road, but the sipes are still large enough so that you've got improved wet or dry handling. So normally when you make those changes, you get more road noise, but they've done just the opposite. I'm gonna need some of these from my old Suburban because the mudders on that pup, when I'm going up to Yosemite, the, the wife ain't buying that sound. You cannot turn up this stereo system loud enough in that old Suburban to cover that up. This might save my marriage. And if you see here, these are stone ejectors. So like the AT2, this thing pops the stones out after I've been on the gravel road. There's nothing worse than having stones stuck in the tread for about 50 miles. You get on the freeway, they're still in the tread, and as you get up to speed, it's like somebody shoot, shooting a rifle into your wheel wells. And here's something cool. If you like the mud terrain look, but you want an all-terrain tire, the side pattern on the tire is different and more aggressive on one side than it is on the other. So if you look at those front wheel wells, it becomes quite apparent that we are gonna have a little clearance problem. So the front has got to come up. To solve that, we called our friends at BDS. We're lifting the front. We're putting Fox all the way around. We didn't want to get too crazy with this because it's going to be on the chassis dyno. We're going to be towing with it. It's going to be all over the place. So this will be absolutely perfect for what we're doing. Let's have a look at the pieces. Here we have the spring spacers. These are bottom mounted spacers. They clean up the appearance in the wheel well. You see the full coil spring as opposed to top spacers. Next out of the box is the track bar mount. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna get the rest of the stuff out of the box and get the box out of the way. So this is the front track bar mount. A lot of guys, when they lift the front, they don't reposition the track bar mount, which moves the axle off center, depending on how far you go. This will handle lifts from one to three inches. And you can, you can actually center it. it, has kind of a cam arrangement that allows you to adjust this and perfectly center the axle. Now I got a comment. The workmanship on this thing is really nice. Good looking welds. And if you look at the thickness of the material, this thing is hell for stout. All right. And the next item we've got here appear to be the ball joint cams. These guys allow you to adjust the caster to the OE 
condition, once you've lifted everything, it maintains the proper handling of the truck and it doesn't contribute to tire wear. The perceptible difference as a driver in changing the caster has to do with steering wheel self-centering or steering wheel return. When we're building a Bonneville car, we, we kick a lot of caster in so that you can hands off and the car wants to go straight. You wouldn't want that road racing. It's a whole different thing. What they're achieving here is the Ford design stock caster with the lift. And just like here at Banks, everything you need is in the kit. You don't have to make any trips to the hardware store. The Loctite was in the box. And in case you don't know this, BDS is owned by Fox Factory. So they work hand in hand. These shocks are gonna work perfectly with this suspension kit. All right, let's have a look at the shock absorbers. There we go. All right, let's have a look at this. We're gonna have two different part numbers. 4710 and a 4717. So we've got one of each right off the bat. Oh, that's pretty stuff. That's cool looking, isn't it? Okay. You know, I'm so, I'm so tempted to cut this, but I won't because it would probably gut punch me. These things are aluminum bodied, 5 8 hard chrome shaft, a floating piston inside between the nitrogen and the fluid prevents cavitation and aeration of the fluid itself. That gives you consistent performance regardless of what you're doing. Pretty sweet setup. So you don't have a, a separate nitrogen reservoir it's built into the shock. Fox knows a thing or two about Ford. They've had a long-term relationship, Fox and Ford trucks. So there you have it, BDS, Fox, Toyo, all made in the USA. But I've got one more thing to show you that's also made in the USA. So when Curtis was testing our diff cover for the Sterling axle under this Ford, he's out in the mountains. He's got all this tools and rigging and everything in the bed, and it's drifting all around him. Finally, I went, we gotta have something to control that stuff. You're gonna just beat the hell out of the truck. So we got a hold of our friends at DECT up in Idaho. These guys are headquartered in Idaho and they build this stuff in Ohio. So this system is a below the side rail system. You've got two drawers, you've got lots of cubby holes, if you will, places to put things. All the hardware is stainless. The handles are cast aluminum. The drawers and the housing, the exterior, are high density polyethylene, so it ain't rusting. And what's really beautiful is we like to load sandbags in the bed to give us more load on a grade, or if we're on the chassis dyno, just to hold it down and not spin the tires. We can put up to 2,000 pounds of sandbags on top of this thing in the bed. Now, if you don't mind, it's time to put all this stuff on the truck.
it's done. What do you think? We've installed BDS suspension, Fox shocks, black Rhino wheels, Toyo AT3, 35-inch all-terrain tires, and out in the bed, a decked drawer system. Man, am I parched. Freshy. And inside the truck, we've got some Banks equipment. An iDash data monster controlling a Derringer tuner and a pedal monster throttle booster. And out back, we've got our five inch monster exhaust with our new sidekick negative pressure tip. And we're keeping the rear end cool with our new Ram Air differential cover for the Sterling axle. And it's filled with Amsoil Severe Gear Lubricant. This is a bank sidewinder. I think I'm gonna make some more. You want one? Oh, mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. I don't know.